even in the beginning, I've only looked at, at the beginning of his book, but the very beginning, Donna has a poem in there called Resurrection, or Resurrection Life. It's really powerful. Just encourage y'all to read that, too, because lots of times we just go to Terry's, but her, her poems have been really powerful. So, Father, we, well, one thing I want to share too, because going along with Brian's word at the beginning of war, uh, during worship, I heard that God was jealous for this house. There's a real jealous love for this body that I heard him say that. So, Amen. Amen. anyway, not that it needs confirmation, but I love how he speaks the same thing. Father, we do bow our hearts before you, and we're grateful for what you're doing in the house, Lord. We just stand yes, amazed yeah. at how you have knitted hearts together in love here, in the unity, in the spirit that you're bringing, Lord, and we just honor you as our God yes, and are yes. so grateful that we can call you Jesus, our bridegroom king, and Lord, I know we're on healing today, but Lord, I just pray that you would really awaken in each and every heart that bridal identity, that you would awaken your bride to know you as the bridegroom king. Oh, God, just put that so in our hearts, Lord, that we will really know that we're engaged to the king of kings and lord of lords, that it's not just something we talk about, but it's a reality, oh, God, for the days ahead. And, Lord, we just pray that you would just release even your divine romance in your people. And, Father, we cry out that even as Ken teaches today and as you're bringing back covenant and healing and, and stirring our hearts, we pray that you would stir our spirits today to receive a real impartation of, the, of even the gift of faith, Lord, that you would bring that back to the forefront to where we will truly see you do things in and among us of healing once again, Lord. We just pray that you give us the revelation. Open our eyes and ears and give us revelation and let us hear by the Spirit what you were saying. And Lord, I do thank you for the word that you have given Ken and I just pray that you speak, Father, that you speak Jesus, that you speak Holy Spirit. It's not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit of God, that you speak mightily, that your words would not come back void, but it will accomplish what you want to do. But we pray for a rich harvest to come forth as a result of this. We just pray that you speak and you would, Lord, we want to see this, the demonstration of your Spirit and power today, we ask in Jesus' name. Yes, amen. Amen, amen. Well, I'm, I'm excited about this message. Um, I believe it uh, hopefully will uh, stir f faith among us in a very uh, real and powerful way, in a deep way. Um, uh, this is like the third message on healing, and I'll be talking about healing and praying for the for sick and, and actually even more walking in God's covenant blessings of health and healing. Uh, but I do really believe that it's an important word for us today, and I know it's uh, 1130, uh, and one thing, one word that I know is not in the scriptures uh, is that church has to end at noon. Um, so, <laughs> so I really want your attention because uh, we can't really, for a number of reasons, we can't really divide it up into uh, multiple messages. So I really want to uh, I really want your attention for as long as it takes to bring this word because I really believe uh, this whole series on covenant and uh, this secondary part of that series on healing and walking in health as it relates to co walking in covenant uh, is a really important uh, teaching for us in this hour in which we live. Like Brian said a few minutes ago, the world has gone crazy and uh, obviously it has stuff that you, we would have never thought would be going on in the world uh, is, and uh, you know, a lot of that is the world system coming against the Christianity and those who are walking with the Lord. And so because of that, I believe in the decade ahead or however long it is, we're going to have to learn to live more and more based on our relationship with Christ and less and less dependent upon the world system. 
Uh, so I really believe that. Uh, and uh, the Lord has really put on my heart now for over a year that we need to teach on living by covenant and the promises of living by covenant uh, so that as that day unfolds, and it prob probably will be a progressive thing, not necessarily immediately or suddenly. Maybe it will. Who knows? But I really believe that God wants us to be prepared uh, to live by, his, by our covenant relationship with the Lord in terms of our dependence upon him. Uh, and health and healing will be one of those things. And that'll be one of the things that will, I believe, will be more and more dependent upon to live in. And we'll do in, in subsequent months, we'll do some on provision and some on protection as well. Those three areas the Lord has really put in my heart that we need to learn to live by. So anyway, what I, the reason I'm saying that, you know, I know it's so easy to hear a message and uh, either say I liked it or I didn't like it or whatever, but not really incorporate it into our heart, into our life. Uh, and we all do that. Uh, I've never done it when Brian's taught, but we mostly, but we, but we all, we, seriously, we all do that. Uh, but this series is not one of those. I, I, I really believe that we need to learn to really take these truths and incorporate them into our walk with God uh, about living by covenant and this particular one by uh, living and walking in God's divine health and, and healing in, in those areas. From. So uh, anyway, I, that's just a kind of a little bit of a, uh, introduction about the importance of it. Uh, th and one more thing I want to say as we get in, into it, I'm not talking in this series so much about uh, praying for the sick as an altar call or in response to a word of knowledge. Uh, and we're we're going to pray for the sick today, but I'm not. That's not really the primary objective of uh, of this teaching. Is for us to learn to walk in our covenant relationship with the Lord. In covenant, as we talked about in this last uh, series we had, God has a hold on us. We, we deny ourselves, we take up our cross daily, and we surrender our life to him and all that that means. But also, God in, in, in covenant is a loving God of loving kindness, uh, which is his devotion to those in covenant with him. And so we all, we, you know, one dimension of it, we need to learn to surrender our lives daily to the Lord. But the other aspect of it is we need uh, to have faith uh, to hang on, hold fast to his promises, hold fast to his covenant. R regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of what's going on uh, in, even in our life, there's a, there's a standard that is there that God has set in his word, the truth of his word, and we need to learn to hold on to it because God is a covenant-making, covenant-keeping God. Uh, and that's our, in our relationship, uh, it's always been that way, but as the world system falls apart, uh, especially in America where we have been so blessed as a country, we must learn to live by the promises of God, the word of God, uh, to be uh, to walk in the victory that God's uh, word promises for us. So anyway, the, we're going to be talking about healing and health, but the point I want to make is it's not so much about uh, getting a word of knowledge and we're praying for people with an elbow problem or something like that today. That's, we'll do that, and that's good, uh, and it's important. But we're talking about each of us individually, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, learning to depend upon God as our healer and our health and coming to him when we have a need to see him healed, uh, see us healed by him. Amen? Amen. amen. All right. Amen. And saying that, though, there is a word that the Lord gave me for our church. Uh, it's a word for the message as well, but it's also a word from our for our church. Galatians chapter 3, verse 5. Uh, does he, Paul is writing this, does he, talking about Christ, does he then who provides you with the Spirit and works miracles among you, he who provides you with the Spirit and he who works miracles among you, 
do it by the works of the law or by hearing with faith or by hearing with faith. Now, two things I want to say about that. Uh, in terms of appropriating in our covenant relationship God's promises of health and healing, that, uh, that it's appropriated by hearing with faith, hearing with faith. Uh, so we need to remember that. But also, this is the word for the church. Uh, I really believe it, this is part of the reset. You know, we've been talking about that and uh, been focused on it um, ever since the end of the election and all of that about resetting uh, in order to uh, touch the community, which is the word that the Lord's given to us. I mean, we, God has used us in, in really some really significant ways in the nations. And, uh, you know, I, I was talking to Doug uh, this morning. He's, he won, he's the one that prints all the diplomas for the life school graduates. And he was like, man, I can't believe how many diplomas we, he's been printing. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know, 2,800 it'll be before we finish. So, so, so we're touching the nations, but God wants us to touch the community in a, bit, in a better, in a, not a better, but a bigger and a larger way. Uh, and so he wants to release miracles among us. That's the, the word. And that's going to be a key thing. And so what, what, what does that mean? Now, I mean, uh, we're talking about primarily walking in faith individually, but as the culture of faith, and listen to me now, as the culture of faith in the house rises up, faith to believe God to work miracles among us, to expect it, to expect him to do it, maybe not every Sunday, but to expect God to work miracles among us. As that culture in this house rises up, then God will come and he'll touch us uh, in our faith, uh, in our culture. So it's important one, to walk by covenant individually, but also to have that culture of God working miracles among us as a corporate group to believe that. Amen? Amen? Amen. Uh, all right, okay. All right, let's wake up. You seem kind of sleepy, to, uh, drowsy today. Are you, are you awake? Are you alert? Amen. Yes. Okay, a few of you. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, look, I want to start, we, we want to talk about faith. Uh, it, it, it's important if we want to if we want to walk in covenant promises, we have to walk by faith. Uh, Hebrews eleven six uh, says this, and without faith it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. You know that he is is kind of a take on Exodus, I think it's chapter 3, where God says, I am the great I am. He is. God is, God is, uh, he is the great I am. He is above every other name. He is above every other situation. He is what we need whenever we have a need in our life. He is our all in all. He is. And, we, and if we want to if we want to see the reward, the blessing of faith, we must believe uh, that God is. Uh, you know, I like to say it this way. What is, what is our need right now? He is the solution to that need. He is the one that fulfills that need. And he's a rewarder of those who believe him uh, for in those areas of need. Uh, we must believe that he is a rewarder of, of those who believe he rewards us by his faith. Now, also in that same chapter, Hebrews 11, chapters, uh, verses 1 uh, and 2, he, he def, uh, Paul, or the author, defines what faith is. Uh, and basically, just paraphrasing it, what he says is faith is believing what God says, being convicted of it, being convinced of it, regardless of what the world says, regardless of what uh, our own uh situation is, what our body says, what the doctor says, what uh, the bank account says. He is believing his word uh, above those things. That's what faith is. And so, you know, we, we have to walk in faith in every area of our life. We, we are saved by faith. We're delivered by faith. We, God has uses, it's our faith in him that causes him to move in every way. But healing is a part of that. 
Um, you know, I, I, I did a, just a concordant search on the word faith. How many times do you think the word faith appears in the New Testament? Anybody has a guess? How many? Just give a, give a sh shout out. How much? N not quite. Okay. But any, 246 times in 228 verses, the New Testament talks about faith. Now, that's probably, I mean, I don't, I don't check every word in the New Testament, but that's a lot of times. That's a lot of times. So faith is important. Faith is important for God's healing power, for anything, really. But it's also important for healing. You, you know, I, I didn't check every all the Gospels to see uh, how if there were any uh, exceptions to this. But almost every time, if not every time, when Jesus did a miracle of healing, he says to the person, it's your faith. It's your faith that made you well. Uh, it's your faith that did it. Your faith has caused me to move. And so that's what, that's what we have to have. We have to believe that God is our healer. We have to believe the truth. We, you know, we've had two other messages on this. We've talked about that it was God's will, and we talked about five different threads that run through the scriptures that show that it's God's will uh, that, we, that we walk in health and that we be healed uh, when, we, when we're sick. Uh, then we talked last week about closing the door to the enemy. Things like bitterness and unforgiveness, being angry uh, at God, the spirit of infirmity, all of those things. Uh, they can cause us to, to, uh, to, be, to be sick. We talked about that, but even in the midst of that, what motivates God to move on our behalf is our faith, is our faith, is our trust in him in that area in which there is a need. Where whatever it is, we have to begin to trust him, to trust him in that. Uh, it's our faith that moves God. He's not moved by our anger. He's not moved uh, by just our manipulation of him. He's moved by our trust. Our trust, almost like in the Sermon on the Mount, the the, the man in poverty, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, uh, the one that, that has that that comes to him and say, I I can do nothing, but Lord, I know that you are the great I am, I believe that you are, and I and I'm trusting you to be my healer in this case, in this topic that we're talking about. I'm trusting you to heal me. And so. It's faith that moves him to heal. And then the other aspect of that is where there is no faith, the Lord can't do really do miracles. Um, you know, in, in Nazareth, he came and he couldn't really do miracles there or many miracles. Why? Because they had unbelief. So he moves by faith, but he's, it, uh, our unbelief hinders the Lord uh, from moving. So anyway, let's turn over to uh, Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Let's Mark 5, 25. This is a good illustration of, uh, of how to trust God for healing in, in terms of a covenant-type relationship, of walking with him uh, in covenant. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. There was, I'll read through it and talk about it as I go. A woman who had a, a hemorrhage for 12 years... And she had endured much at the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was not helped at all, but rather had grown worse. Uh, and so we're going to see in a minute she comes to Jesus. But how, does, how much does this characterize most of us? You know, when we have a need, when we have something, what do we do? We go to every uh, doctor, uh, every home remedy or whatever. And, I, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I mean, anything wrong with doctors. I'm, I am so thankful for doctors. And I'm so thankful for the health care system that we have in America. Uh, I mean, all you have to do is go to one of the third world nations and see their hospital system and you're thankful for what God has provided in America. Uh, but how often do we spend 
days, months, years go into every situation other than God. And see, what God wants us to do is he wants us to come to him. He wants to come to him. Not that we, you know, it's with hearing by faith. Uh, so he may say, go to a doctor. He probably would, you know, if it's something that can be treated by the doctor. Uh, I'm not in, in any way opposed to that. But at the same time, God wants us to come to him, to him. So this lady had been 12 years going to all the doctors. Nothing had happened. But then after hearing about Jesus, after hearing about him and the fact that he is the, he is the healer, she came up to the crowd behind him and touched his cloak. For she thought, if I could just touch his garments, I will get well. Now there was a crowd there. It was a, it was a packed crowd there. And so she had to press through all the crowd. She had to kind of press through all the, the group that was sur surrounding Jesus. She had to come and press through all those. And she got to him and she touched from the back the, the hem of his garment. And the power flowed out. Immediately, she had, going back to 28, verse 28, she said, if I can just touch him, if I can just hang on to the covenant, promise. If I can just hang on to that, I'll get well. See, that's her faith. That's her faith. Immediately, the flow of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her afflictions. Immediately, Jesus, perceiving in him that the power proceeding from him uh, had gone forth, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my garments? And then his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see the woman who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. It was her faith that caused her uh, to be healed. So what did she do? She had gone to all the other places, all the other sources, but finally after 12 years she goes to Jesus and she didn't have a man of God. He didn't uh, in, intervening. Uh, she didn't have somebody give her a word of knowledge. She just knew that he was her healer. She had just heard that and she pressed in to his healing power, to him and, he, and, and her need of being healed and touched and she healed him. Uh, and that's the way we have to learn to live. We have to be like that lady. Uh, not that we don't use doctors, but, you know, we need to go to God. We ask him what to do. Sometimes there's, there's the, 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 the use of doctors and physicians and all kind of chiropractors and therapy and all that can be very helpful. Most of the time it is. A lot of the time it is. But sometimes it's not. I know when I had my... Uh, sciatic nerve problem. I went to the chiropractor uh, for months and, you know, she prescribed all kind of stuff, did all kind of things and it got worse. And finally, I just said, okay, I'm giving up. Uh, and, you know, medical, just like this lady here. And, but this time a word of knowledge came and God touched me and healed it uh, after that. But we have to learn to call on God. We have to come to Him and call on Him to, to, to depend on Him for our healing and our health. Now, I want, to, I want to talk about, okay, how do we build faith? You know, the point I've made so far is that uh, God is moved by our faith and healing comes by faith. You know, Jesus said time after time after time, also in the book of Acts, there was by faith faith. Uh, there was also i share one more verse. Uh, I think it's Acts 19. I don't, I don't have it handy here. But where Paul uh, was ministering and he, he had set his gaze upon people in the audience and he saw a person who had faith for healing and he touched them and he healed them. See, so even in the ministry thing, it's the faith uh, that causes that. Um, okay, now how do we build faith? Let's talk about uh, building uh, faith because 
probably every one of us need our faith, especially for healing, but maybe for a lot of things, we need our faith built up. How do we, how do, we do it? How do we, how do we build our faith? First, let me talk about the Word. The Word, the Word of God, the Scriptures, but also specifically Christ and the Word, who is the Word, and the Word of God, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus said that in John chapter 6, verse 63. My words are spirit and they are life. They are Zoe life. You know, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living. The word of God is living and it's active and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of the soul, the spirit, of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. But the point I want to make here is he said the word is living. Uh, th that is such an important thing to understand. The word is not just information. The word, the word of Christ, Christ himself and the word is not just information. There's impartation and there's revelation and there's transformation that comes in the Word. Uh, you know, one of the, uh, this is a little plug for the home groups, but one of the um, home, the scriptures in our uh, session for last month's home group from 1 Thessalonians, for 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. And for this reason, we also constantly thank God that when you receive from us the word of God's message, talking about the word, you accepted it not as the word of men, you accept for what it really is, the word of God. You accept it as the word of God. In other words, he, they believed that it was the word of God. And this, this is this last phrase, which also performs its work in you who believe. So the word, it's not just information. It's, it's alive. It's important. So the word is alive. So when it's ingested into uh, the heart, in, into the heart and accepted and believed, there's life that comes forth in it, from it. Uh, you know, go into, I'm not going to turn there, but go into Galatians chapter 6. It says, you know, God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you shall reap. And if you sow uh, to the flesh, I think it is, you'll reap corruption. But if you sow to the Spirit, if you sow to the Spirit, what do you do? You reap life. If you sow to the Spirit, you reap life. Now, a chapter before that, uh, in Galatians chapter 5, is the fruit of the Spirit. You know, if you, the, if you live by the Spirit, in other words, if you sow into the Spirit, what does it produce? It produces fruit. It produces love. It produces joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. And one of those aspects of the fruit of the Spirit is that it produces faith. It says faithfulness. Uh, in the New American Standard, but it's really better, I think, better translated faith. It produces faith. So if you sow truth, if you sow the Word, if you sow Christ into your heart, now Jesus' parable of the sower says it has to be good soil. It has to be soil of a good heart that you believe and you accept and all the different things that it says there in the various uh, places where the parable of the sower appears. But if you sow the scriptures, if you sow Christ, if you sow the word of Christ uh, into your heart, it produces the fruit of God. It produces the fruit of God. And if you sow the word of healing uh, into your heart, it produces faith for the healing. If you produce whatever you sow, you shall reap. So you know, it's not the only thing. Obviously, it's not the only thing and maybe not even the most important thing we sow into our heart, but it's part of it. It's important that we sow the truth into our heart. 
Now, let's look also, let's look next at Ephesians chapter 6 about the, the spiritual armor. You know, Paul concludes Ephesians with putting on the armor of God. Finally, be strong in the Lord. Verse 10, start with verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Uh, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, powers, and principalities against the world forces of this uh, darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Then here's what he says. Therefore, because you're in a battle, uh, remember what we said, I think it was last week, God is good, devil's bad. He's coming to try to kill, steal, and destroy you. Sickness is part of that. Uh, and he says, put on the full armor of God that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Now look, this, look at this verse 14. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth. Having girded your loins with truth. Having, past tense. Because when the battle comes, it's important that we have girded our loins with truth. Uh, girded means uh, like get ready for a quick battle. Quick, get ready to run. And loins is kind of the, the, the heart, the area of the, uh, of the belt, the, way, the, 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 the waist and all of that. And so in other words, how do we stand firm against the, 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 the plans of the enemy? How do we stand firm? Well, we have to deposit truth into our inner being, having past tense. When the battle comes, it could be too late to actually... Put the truth into your heart. So in, as an ongoing basis, we have to put truth uh, into our heart. Now that's truth for a lot of different things, but it, we're talking about healing and health uh, today. And so we have, to put, we have to put truth of God's word about healing and health into our heart, having girded our loins with truth. Then what, what does he go on? What does he go? He talks about the breastplate of righteousness and the gospel of peace and all that. But then th those are not a, for today. But in addition, verse 16, in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, which you will be able to extinguish with flaming missiles of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So we have girded our loins with the truth of God's word as it relates to health and healing in the topic that we're talking about today. So what happens? A, a problem, an issue comes against us. We, stand, we hold against that issue the sh our shield, which is our shield of faith, believing the truth that we have deposited into our hearts rather than what circumstances might say. Yes, the diagnosis says this. God's word says he's our healer. God's word says we can walk in health. That's the truth that we've deposited in our heart. So when the attack comes, we, hit, we stand up in faith, our shield, which is faith, saying, no, I don't receive that. Uh, I don't receive that because I, God's word is something different than that. Now, we also take the sword and we come against the enemy with the sword, which is the word. And so there's a battle that goes on. There's a battle that we have to, that we, uh, have to fight a lot of times. But we fight it using the word that we've sown, you know, having uh, put on the belt of truth. We have it, so we pull out the truth out of our girdle or wherever it is, and we fight the fight of faith, resisting on one hand and fighting with the word of God that has been deposited in us. That's how, I mean, and we need to learn to live that way. It's not just for healing. We need to learn to live that way in a multitude 
of ways. We need to learn by to live by the covenant promises of God. Thus the truth. God is a God of truth. That is the truth. The enemy will come to try to steal, kill, and destroy, but we need to learn to live that way. Now, I talked about I talked about Galatians chapter 3, verse 5 a little bit earlier. How does he do miracles among us? By hearing with faith. Hearing with faith. Now, I talked about the faith, but the hearing. When we face a battle like that, I mean, we have to hear what God is saying. Uh, we have to, we can't just, it's not just meaningless repetition. It's not just uh, like confessing something uh, over and over again in order, if I, if I confess this enough, I'm going to manipulate God to move on my behalf. It's not that, but it's hearing what God is saying. But from the mindset of believing that God is my healer, that God wants me to walk in health, and whatever I'm battling right now, he does not want me to spend the rest of my life with this issue. Uh, that's the perspective we come from. Now, you know, it may be, when we get to heaven, that we get completely healed. Uh, you, you know, I, I mean, I know it's not perfect in this life. Uh, we live in a fallen world, and it's not, it's not perfect. But I'll tell you this. This is from years of experience. You'll walk in a lot better health. You'll see God move in your life a lot more if you will live this way than you would have if you had not. If you, you just be battered uh, all around, you know. I mean, I know the, some of the younger ones here, you, you know, you haven't really had to battle a lot of uh, physical issues probably. But as we get older, there are things that we have to battle. Uh, and, you know, the more we live this way, the more we'll walk in the healing promises of God. The more we'll live in the reality of those things. And God wants us to do that. You know, Paul said to Timothy that our faith has to be nurtured, has to be nurtured. He said also to Timothy that, that you know, faith can be shipwrecked. Uh, and if we don't continually nurture our faith, then we can lose it for whatever area. And I think God wants to refresh our faith for healing. You know, we first started the church as a, we're coming up on 30 years of being a church here this summer. Uh, hard to believe it's been that long. But when we first started, we, we, you know, faith, was a, faith for healing was a big part of who we were. But the Lord had other things for us, and we, he, we laid it down. But I think if we're going to touch the community, if we're going to live in the reality of what's coming in, the, in this decade, it needs to be refreshed. And we need to let faith arise for a lot of things, but also for healing for healing and walking in health. Now, I'll, I'll close with this. This is the way I do it. And, you know, I, I confess that I did it faithfully for years and then I've kind of gotten away from it, but the Lord's really spoken to me again to, to, to re refresh my own faith, believing for his healing power. And not just healing for everything, but... Uh, you know, when, when I pray every day and Donna and I pray together, one of the things that uh, I've done for years and then I, I have gotten away from it, but we're getting back to it, is to thank the Lord on a daily basis of who he is in our life. Uh, you know, I, I, we, I used to use the names of God, those compound names of God on a regular basis. Lord, I thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. I thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord my righteousness. That you are Jehovah Makedesh, the Lord my sanctifier. That you are Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. You're Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner of victory. You are those things. And just to, just to declare over us, so faith does come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we, we, we thank him for those things. And one of the names that we thank him for is that, Lord, I thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. And you say in your word that you'll put none of the diseases of Egypt upon me if I walk with you. And so we thank him for that. And then in the study time, I mean, I, you know, I don't 
study healing hardly at all anymore. But there was a season where I dug into the word about what God's word says about health and healing. You know, God has different seasons for us. And there are different things right now uh, that you may, be, you may be studying. But, you know, there was a time when I, when I took a time and dug into the scriptures, what does your word say about health and healing? And I deposited those in my spirit, girding my loins with truth, and now I, I, repeat, I thank the Lord uh, on a regular basis that he is all those things. And I want to challenge you to start doing that, to start doing it. If you, you can just get the name, those compound names of Jesus or of, of the Lord are, are a good way to start because it pretty much covers uh, everything. Um, and as we do that, what, the, what that does is it raises faith up in our own heart. Our faith arises in our own heart heart in our own life so that when the battle comes, I mean, first off, I believe just declaring those things and believing those things in and of itself causes us to, to walk in more health than we would otherwise without our having to battle it. But when the battle comes, when the issue comes, we stand with our shield of faith because we have girded our loins with truth and then we take the sword of the Spirit and we fight it with the sword of the Spirit, with the sword of the Spirit. Now, this pertains to everything other, I mean, not just healing and health, but it definitely pertains to those things. So, I want to challenge you. I really want to challenge you to start living by God's covenant promises. I want to challenge you to live in faith and to build faith to build faith, to nurture faith, as Paul said to Timothy. To nurture faith, but to nurture it in, in many ways, but one of those ways is for health and healing. To nurture it by girding your loins with truth, the truth of what the scriptures say. Sowing it into the spirit so that you can, cre you can uh, reap the life of the spirit. Remember, God's word, the words of Christ, they are spirit and they are life. And as you do that, like I said, even just, not only just faith, but actually the word would accomplish, it will accomplish what you speak, what you pray, what you sow into it. It actually performs that. That's how, that's, I mean, that's how we get conformed to the image of Christ. We sow the scriptures into our, into our hearts. And what happens when we do that? We sow the scriptures into our hearts. And as we, as we do that, the Spirit of God does a work of transformation into our heart. That's how we're conformed into the fruit of the Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the humility, the, the Christ-likeness comes out of that. But we're talking about healing for today. And it, you sow that in there and it performs a work of health and healing. God's Word has life. But we have to we have to set up a relationship with Christ, you know. We can't be so busy that we don't have time for him. Time to meditate on his word, to study his word, to privately worship, to pray, all the various things. If we do that, if we don't do that, then we'll not sow Christ into our hearts. We want, if we don't sow healing, faith for healing, into our word, the, the word of he, truth related to healing into our hearts, we won't believe it when we need to. So anyway, I challenge you to do that. I challenge you to, to make that a lifestyle choice that you begin to live by. Sowing it, thanking God that he is those things in your life on a daily basis, and then standing in faith when they come against you. In Jesus' name. Let's pray. Let's stand up and pray. We want to pray uh, for the sick, uh, uh, whatever the needs might be. Even though the, this message is not uh, intended necessarily to pray uh, as a response to an altar call, it's more of a lifestyle walk. But I really believe the Lord wants to, us to pray for whatever the needs might be. One thing I do really, have really been on my heart 
is uh, pray against a spirit of infirmity, uh, spirit of infirmity. Um, you know, if, if you have battled one thing after another uh, all, all, most of your life or a lot of your life, you know, one of the things that Jesus did when he healed the sick, it was faith, but so, a lot of times he cast out a spirit, a demonic spirit that was causing the sickness. And, uh, and that, the Lord really has put that on my heart more than maybe anything else um, is if you battle, you know, if you battle one thing after another, you, get, you go through this, you get, it, uh, you get healed from it, and then something else pops up, and it's like that, what's that game where you hit the hammer and, yeah, whack-a-mole, you know, that, and then something else pops up. Okay, if you have that, then we want to pray for that. But at first, I want to just, I want to just pray in a general sense uh, for that. I'm going to pray, and then I will get you to come forth. And we may not lay hands on everybody. We, we, we uh, may, we just kind of wait on the Lord and see what he says, but we'll pray for everybody. And a lot of times when you come to the front, the Lord will kind of put somebody on our hearts to know that you, we need to pray for that person specifically. So, so anyway, let's just receive, though. Let's just ask God to come. We, we thank you, Father. We, let's pray. But Father, we thank you that you are our healer. We do believe your word, Lord. We say to you, we believe that you are Jehovah Rapha. We do believe that as we walk in covenant, we are heirs to the blessings of Abraham. And we thank you, Father, that one of the blessings of Abraham is you said you would be Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer, and that you would put none of the diseases of Egypt upon us, and that you would heal us from all disease. Father, we, we just trust you that you are our healer. And Lord, as we come and, and pray, we pray that you would manifest your healing power today among us. Lord, we believe your word from Galatians chapter 3, verse 5, that he who works miracles among us does it by faith, hearing with faith. And so we ask, Father, for you to come and touch, come and touch us with your healing power. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord.